How do you keep up to date with industry software and services? With interviews and demonstrations to keep you informed and up to date, here is a great investment of your time. So be sure to catch every episode of the Techsplain series. And remember to hit like and subscribe. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the Techsplain series. A lucky guess, that's all I can say. The bar has been lifted so high in terms of guest experience and it continues to rise with all the competition out there. Between a hotel quality interior fit out to coffee machines with pods from bringing their pets to being gifted welcome baskets, what else is left to do? Well, today we're learning about something else we could offer. Probably one that you'd thought to do yourself but thought it was probably a little too much work. Well, not anymore. Today, I'm chatting with Connor, who will explain what Noshable offers. Hello, Connor, how are you? Good, thanks for having me. I'm excited to chat today. Yes, thank you very much for coming along, and I'm excited to learn more about Noshable. But we're going to stick with the same questions. So we're starting off with, in one sentence, what does Noshable do? Yeah, we allow property managers to offer their guests grocery concierge services at an affordable price and with very little hassle on the property manager side of things. Right. So I think a lot of property managers have thought about, oh, it would be nice to offer uh, groceries or let the guest offer uh, organize their own groceries. So how has Noshable made it work? So I'm wanting to offer this service to my guests. How does it work for me to organize it? And who yeah, does so. So there's two methods and we call them trusted fulfillment because they're people that are actually trusted to access the property as opposed to services like Instacart or, or Uber Eats where they just drop things off at the door. There is this another level of trust that you want when someone's accessing either your home or maybe someone's second home that you manage. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those trusted fulfillment people are one of two. Uh, the first option is if you're a property manager and you do want to take on this feat, but you still want it to be much easier than doing it yourself, you can onboard your own people your own cleaners, your own staff. It can be your 16 year old daughter for the summer and then you can do it the rest of the year if she needs a summer job. However you wanna do that, someone that's trusted within your own network can be onboarded and you can manage all of the like delivery and pickup information through our dashboard. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll market the links and or you will market the links to the guest um, and the whole shopping experience, payments, um, them doing all the shopping, the orders getting placed with the grocery store, the inventory at the grocery store, that's all still handled by us. So mm -hmm. all you're really doing is doing a quick curbside click list pickup. You're not actually shopping or whoever your trusted fulfillment is and then stocking it in the fridge. So that's the first okay. option. Okay, wait, wait, can I rewind it for a second? So yeah. in this case, who does the ordering? Because I'm seeing two, two cases here. The property manager can say, oh, I can set you up for, you know, a starter pack. Or is the guest placing the order here? The guest is placing the order and I can show you that a little bit later. So it's a very, very similar UI to that of ordering from walmart.com or, you know, any major retail grocery store right. um, and, you know, gone are the days of text box grocery lists and just having people send you a list and then you having to constantly communicate about substitutions and that kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, that's yeah. the first method. And then the second method is if you really don't want to have to handle that at all, and you're just happy if your cleaners even show up at the right time, which definitely a lot of people experience, then we have trusted fulfillment partners and are constantly expanding that network um, that will do the deliveries for you um, mm -hmm. in exchange. They get 100% of the delivery fee. So if you use your own people, you can set the delivery fee and play with the margins there, however you'd like. Mm -hmm. uh, alternatively, if you want, we'll just find a trusted fulfillment partner in your area mm -hmm. um, and then they will do all the deliveries for you. And we actually still rev share a portion of the markup on the goods. So even if you're a property manager, not only is this like great for guest experience, uh, but if you decide not to use your own staff and that delivery fee goes to the people we partner with in your area to do the deliveries, you'll still make some money off of every order. Whoa, okay. And when you say fulfillment and delivery, et cetera, do you mean the food is in the fridge? And in yeah, the correct. Yep. It's in the fridge. It's laid out nicely on the counter. It really gives you that experience like you're staying in like a Four Seasons or a nice hotel or, or like Disney World or something like that for a very similar price to Uber Eats or Instacart, something of that nature. Yeah. So the guest, when they click on the link that I'm assuming that I'm going to provide them with the link, a noshable link, and mm -hmm. they have the equivalent of a supermarket to choose from, 
or is it a smaller range or is it a supermarket range? Yeah. So what we found is most grocery concierge companies, because they, they do exist, are significantly more expensive. And oftentimes either it's just a text box or it's generic pictures. Um, and then, then you click on that picture and then you provide specifics with us. It's directly tied into the inventory of the grocery stores. Oh, um, right. So it's the same, same pricing essentially. Um, it's, you know, what they have in stock and it's what they carry. So you can specifically search a favorite snack or, um, if you like, for example, you're a vegan and beyond is a popular beyond meat is a popular brand. You can search that and see what that grocery store has that, you know, might be a meat substitute if everyone's grilling out that one night of your vacation. So you yeah. have a complete search that you're able to leverage. Yeah. Okay. So I've sent the guests the link they've done their shopping. And then obviously it must come to, to the delivery section. So they're going to say that we arrive on this day and then do they have to pick a delivery window or, you know, deliver by, or how does the delivery time then work out? Yep. So actually that part of the experience starts before they even begin to shop. So right when they click that link, we tether each custom link to the property that they're staying in. So for example, if we called the property that was offering Nashville to its guests, Barcelona getaway, um, the first thing they see when they click that custom link that's marketed to them is a little pop-up and it has a mini map like an OTA would, similar to Airbnb, showing the location, the rough location, the property, how the property is marketed. So it'd say in big kind of black letters, are you shopping for Barcelona getaway? And then the address. And all they have to do is hit yes to confirm. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then they can select their date of arrival. And depending on um, like PMSs and... Um, guidebooks and things that we're working on integrating with right now down the line we won't have to even ask them um, yeah. what their date of arrival is we'll have that information but for now we still do that and then yeah. we also serve, are starting to serve as second homes and a yeah. lot of people don't really have a, a check-in for their own second home so this allows them to just pick that day to have their second home stocked with the goods as well and yeah. then from there they shop and then they check out so uh, we already kind of have that address and know where they're shopping for tied to um, that custom link. And then as far as the time, like the scheduling goes to do the pickup that falls either on the property manager and their staff to decide when, because they mm -hmm. know when the property is turning or mm -hmm. if they're outsourcing that, then we have a standard turn window that we ask them and have set in place so that we know when we have our trust fulfillment partners actually do the deliveries. Yeah, you do. You know, I'm, I'm, it, even regardless of what time the guest arrives, there is that little window after the cleaners are finished to the early check-in where the house would be empty, the property would be empty, and it's an ideal time to slip in and stock up the fridge, the, the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, the property managers would know that little window when would be the best time because, obviously, yeah. the idea is to have it there before the guest arrives. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and we found a lot of property managers will use their cleaners to do this anyways yeah. since it's, like, let's say you have a, a pretty standard turn of, like, 11, um, and then on the way to the to the property, you can stop at the grocery store maybe 15 minutes before the guest is checking out. And then right when you get there, you can clean the fridge and stock it. Or alternatively, even if the cleaner is separate than the person who's doing the grocery delivery, mm -hmm. um, you can both be there simultaneously. Yeah. Uh, just prioritize cleaning that kitchen and that fridge first, maybe within the first hour. And then you still have a three or four hour window uh, of when the noshable person can actually come and stock the fridge. Yeah. Did you, you just mentioned, and you mentioned it a bit earlier about pickup. So this can also be picked up by the property manager staff, like you said, the cleaner. Yeah. So, so the way we do it, it's all curbside or like click list pickup. Essentially the grocery stores shop for the whole order for free that the guest places. Um, so it's, you know, quickly stopping, backing up your car at the um, pickup slot, and then you can drive off. So yeah. the average time spent is like six minutes. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah at the grocery store. So it's not like you're going in and shopping for all of these items, which, which saves a lot of time and makes it very right. convenient. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. It's, it's either the pickup or you have fulfillment partners that will actually put it in the, in the, in the uh, kitchen, in the fridge, if the cleaners aren't going to be there on that day. Um, so the way it works is either way, it's still picked up at the grocery store. Oh, uh, okay. it's always picked up at the grocery store. It's never shopped in person by anyone representing Noshable. So yeah. if you're, you're the property manager and you pick someone from your own network to do the pickup, they do the pickup and they do the stocking still. Yeah. Alternatively, that whole process can be handled by one of our partners, in which case they'll do the pickup and they'll do the stocking yeah. and your cleaners yeah. can be cleaning away and you don't have to worry about that. 
Yeah, I think that for the fulfilment role, I thought that was the delivery, and it is. It's the pick up, deliver to the property, and put it into yes, the correct. cupboard. Okay, yeah, yeah, great. Okay, so it sounds like a great service. Uh, obviously, you leave it in the hands of the guests. They order what they want. Uh, the timing is sorted out. It can be delivered, uh, I mean, picked up or brought to the, the property by a fulfilment person. Where's the money in this? So how, how does that, how there is revenue share? You mentioned that. How is money made here then? Yeah, so we're free for property managers. Just want to make that clear. So it's not like a SaaS subscription. It doesn't scale in price or anything like that. Whether you have one property or you have 500, it's, it's free to use. Um, if you're familiar with Instacart or services like that, um, there is a, a markup on each of the goods. Um, and we, we share a portion of that markup with property managers to make them stakeholders. So every time that, you know, someone purchases a good individually, you're making a small portion or percentage on that good on top of it being a free service that you're not paying for. So mm -hmm. while it might not be, you know, some crazy amount of money you're, you're making at the same time, it's completely free. And we found the guest experience is, is really important. And it just adds that level of um, hospitality of unreasonable hospitality. I know a lot of people like to talk about uh, mm -hmm. to, to people's vacations. It just makes them feel great. And um, we run a lot of promos as well, where we'll do like free grocery delivery. So a lot of guests, when we first onboard property managers, sometimes we'll put a lot of their properties as just free grocery delivery for a week. And a lot of their guests who book just literally get all their groceries stocked for free and they get to try out the service. So yeah, we make our money ideally um, from that markup. But then um, as we're starting to scale too, it'll be for us personally, just from the business side, like product placement and ads and things of that nature. Um, but for now, it's, the, it's mainly that markup. Mm -hmm. So for the property manager, it's free, but they also get a little cut of the order. Correct. And and the delivery fee, you said you charge a delivery fee, correct? Correct. Sometimes, other times we have like promos and stuff um, yeah. or, yeah, you know, whether it's completely free or spend this much, either, you know, save a certain amount of money or you get the delivery for free then. Um, but the delivery fee, like I said, it either goes to you if you want to handle it yourself or it yeah. goes to... Um, a trusted fulfillment partner, but we don't currently take a cut of any of that. We just give that to whoever's doing the delivery. Yeah. Okay. Now I can hear your accent is American and I'm assuming that you're only really dealing with American markets and American supermarkets. Is that right for now? Right now. Correct. Yep. Only American markets. And then down the line here, we'll probably look to Canada next and then, and then we'll, we'll expand from there. Take over the world. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Now uh, you do have a dashboard. So as, as a property manager, I'll be able to see what's coming and going or what's being ordered and delivered. Can we have a quick look at the dashboard then? Yeah. Let me share my screen and then we'll pop over to it. So. All right. Are you able to see this? Yep. Perfect. I'm going to hide my meeting controls here. And then if we want to look right here, this is under the um, orders tab. You can filter through your orders for each of your properties, et cetera. So this is actually um, like an order that just happened. And there's the order info is not super necessary, um, but the pickup info is. So this is if you were to use your own property uh, or your own like property management team, whoever that might be, whether it's a cleaner, quality assurance. Like I said, it could literally be your daughter or son who's home for spring break or something. And then you want to do it the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then we tie it to a grocery store. This is the number that you could call if you ever have issues like with the pickup. And then you can select time slots from this card. Mm -hmm. So or like the, the window you might have when you know you're like, it'll be clean and, and ready. And then um, Noshville will automatically schedule this, this final pickup time for you right here. Um, and then you can also assign different team members. So if you have multiple team members who may or may not be able to do it, um, this just happens to have one, but you could have multiple team members assigned as well. Um, and then if we go here to the cart. So if you have an email address, if we, if you, when you allocated time, does an email go to that person to say you've got to pick up at this time? Yep. So we have these different statuses you can see here. And yeah. each time they get changed either from Nashville's end or the property manager's end. Yeah. Um, then emails are automatically blasted out with next steps for the person picking up as well as like the guest if, if it's necessary for that piece of communication. Like once the order has been fulfilled, we just like guests have peace of mind that it's already there and it's ready to go. So yeah. they get a simple email saying like, hi, chef, 
you know, have a great vacation, your, your food's awaiting you or something like that. Um, yeah. So there's all these statuses um, through that kind of streamlined process. And then if we go yeah. here, you're able to see the cart. Um, so this guest had originally ordered $265 worth of goods. Um, and then unfortunately there was just like one thing that ended up being unavailable. Um, mm -hmm. since we, we do allow guests to order up to a year in advance. So, and, and then cash their cart. And then, um, when the trip actually happens is when it will be placed. So at some times there's, there's items that get substituted just because of seasonality or, mm -hmm. um, things have changed, but it still allows the majority of the cart to be handled in that booking process and allows them to skip the first two hours of their vacation. So, um, will intrude on this person's cart a little bit and you can see kind of all the things that they had bought. Unfortunately, their beer was what was out. Oh no. <laughs> I know that's a bummer. In fact, I'm pretty sure I saw that support email and they had like, you know, had asked about it and we said, unfortunately it was out and they, they were making a joke about it. They had a great experience still, but they're like, not the beer. It couldn't have been the Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so um, yeah, so you can see that, you know, these are all the goods that this, um, uh, that this guest had purchased. And then each of these goods does have a slight markup tied to it. So if you were to go to, you know, whichever grocery store this is tied to, which in this case is Walmart and look at these gluten-free Oreo sandwich cookies, um, it would be less than five ninety five dollars directly at Walmart. And we are sharing a portion of that profit with uh, the property managers. Yeah. But for the convenience of having it already at a property when you're just about to arrive, and especially like with little kids or you want to, cup of tea and a biscuit when you get there, your favorite biscuits or or summertime yep. you have some ice blocks in the freezer, you know, what a great idea. It's really great to have it there. Yeah. 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 And then if we'd like to see, I can go ahead and pull up from one of the demo addresses here, the experience that the guests will actually see. Oh yeah. Uh, so this is really where we focus more on the UI that the dashboard is pretty simple. And a lot of times we have other people outsource their delivery anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is the experience that the guests will see um, when they've clicked that link, whether you're messaging, like sent through a guide book or it's just automated guest messaging through your OTA, whatever it is. So the first thing they see is kind of this says demo address Kroger, but in reality, this is what would say Barcelona getaway or however you market that property. Yeah. And kind of the idea of where, where it is to make sure they're shopping for the right place. Yeah. Um, and then they simply confirm yes, select the time of arrival. And then from there, this new trip will pop up up here and they can juggle multiple trips. So if you travel a lot and you have several work trips, vacations, a mix plan, you can build a cart as long as each place offers an um, and juggle between different carts, different grocery stores, um, and, and have multiple orders going at the same time. So um, there are obviously things like categories here mm. that you can click through um, to order if my Wi-Fi loads. There we go. And you can start to build a cart with some fruit, but then we can also search for specific things like, um, let's say, Lay's chips, for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then it'll bring up a variety of brands of Lay's. Um, another popular thing is like if the grocery store it's tied to, because each property is set to a specific grocery store in the area that we offer, and we have over 20 different grocery stores offered, uh, but you just have to pick one so that you're not shopping around at a bunch. Um, and, and most have similar items to carry anyways. But one of the nice things is like sunscreen. So if you're on a plane and you can't fit a big sunscreen or you didn't take a, you didn't check a bag and you can't bring it on in your carry-on because it doesn't meet TSA requirements. Oftentimes these grocery stores will have things like sunscreen or, yeah. or Walmart. Um, and that allows you to order some of those CPG goods that you might not want to carry or be allowed to carry on a plane as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you can check your cart here, you have the ability to exchange with closest match. If you're just like, I want SPF 30 sunscreen, it doesn't have to be the specific brand. Mm -hmm. um, you can do that. And if you're not willing to, for example, you can you can turn it off and say, I just really want these strawberries or I don't want strawberries at all. And that's how the substitutions work. Yeah. Over here, you see the final price. And then we have the delivery fee associated. So this one is set to a promo since it's a demo address of free delivery. Yeah. Um, but at times, you know, um, it'll, it'll say $25 or something around that area, depending on, on who's doing the delivery and what it costs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Great. I mean, and yeah, it's simple. There's there's a couple other features like order history, things of that oh, yeah. nature. But, um, and I'm not even sure if this one has it tied. So there's no upcoming orders, but you can see this past order. Um, yeah. It's just, well, this is just beer in this case, but uh, you can yeah. see the orders we've had in the past as well. But well, other, look, if yeah. friends are going away regularly, well, there you go. Just order the same things. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. Um, so yeah, 
other than that, there's some other features we're working on in the near future, such as like uh, the ability to search for recipes as well as actually add all the ingredients for those recipes get added directly into your Noshable cart um, wow. through an search, things of that nature. But yeah. um, we're, those are still in the works. So for now, uh, this experience, believe it or not, is still pretty revolutionary compared to a lot of concierge companies out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is, well, even if you do like those concierge companies that have the text box, they don't have transparent pricing until they've shopped all the groceries and charged your credit card. Like you might enjoy that experience in say Florida, but then you go to New York and you have to find a completely different company that mm. has a different standard. So with us, we have, um, no matter who's doing the deliveries, we have best practices and, and standard operating procedures set in place so that your fridge is gonna be stocked nearly the same way every time, no matter who's doing the delivery and it's all under that noshable umbrella. Mm, fantastic, that's great. And so you, you, like you said, you're just in America. Are you all over America? Yeah, so with it kind of varies um, with our, our grocery stores that we offer. We offer grocery stores in all 50 states in the US. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if we are in all 50 states right now. I don't think so. Uh, but we have the ability to be. So it kind of varies on um, just which property managers we currently have onboarded as well as uh, where we have trusted fulfillment partners. So we have certain people on the wait list right now where yeah. we just don't have a, a fulfillment partner yet in their area and we're working on getting it um, yeah. who just don't want to use their own staff, for yeah. example. They have the grocery store connection. We have the property manager on the wait list. Um, so you know we have a lot of that situation as well where we're just slowly getting... Um, the ability to fulfill these orders in all these different areas as well. Um, it's just a little bit more of an intense process and a vetting process compared to, uh, yeah. say, uh, a gig economy service like Uber. We really want to make sure that whoever's doing this delivery um, is going to be reliable and and that they're you know trusted as well. Because one of the things that we found, and, and I think this is just great advice in general in the hospitality space, is setting expectations. So uh, I'd say 10 out of 10 times offering free grocery delivery is going to be, you know, um, a net positive for the person who's staying there, whether they use it or not, if it's free for them, they're going to think this isn't great service. And uh, if, especially if they use it, they're just going to walk in and they're going to feel great. But the worst thing you can do is offer groceries. And then they arrive, they had 30 minutes to make it to the grocery store that evening and they didn't. So they, ha and then the groceries aren't in the fridge, like you promised, and they aren't stocked. Something went awry with the order. And then they arrive like the next morning, the first thing they do instead of go to the beach or the mountains is to grocery shop for two hours with hangry kids who haven't eaten since, you know, the night before. So, um, and I, I think that applies to a lot of things in hospitality. So that's like one of the things we really have focused on in Noshable is ensuring that this, this expectation we're setting and this promise of groceries happens every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Can we stop sh sharing the screen? Just, uh, I think we've done with the, that dashboard. Yep. Now, you mentioned also before about uh, connecting, uh, integrating with PMS. So when you integrate, does this mean it's going to be part of an email that goes out offering this service? And then, as you said, when they go to book their, their uh, order, their groceries, the property will be there, the checkout date will be there. It'll all be tied in. And also maybe in the digital guidebook as well as a reminder. Yeah, so for us, the biggest ads are definitely going to be just the digital guidebook and than just having the information regarding the reservation. So not having to ask them, because we already have the address from the property manager, yeah. uh, but not having to ask them when they're checking in or the time they're getting in, um, that kind of information will just automatically be you know, entered via that connection with the API of the PMS. So that little box that you saw where I selected my date would just disappear essentially. Mm. And in terms of the size of your, your audience, the companies that you work with, Really, this is a service that you can offer even if you just have one property. And as you said, also, you don't even have to have a holiday rental business. You could just be your second home and you want to stop before you get there. Yeah, exactly. So it kind of goes across all different facets. Um, it's funny that we do have like a lot of smaller uh, property managers who have, you know, heard on, me on podcasts or want to try it. In fact, I'd say it's usually the smaller ones that find me more organically and just want to try this out and get excited about it. And we get a lot of feedback from the smaller ones just naturally. And then the bigger ones, we sometimes have to pry or ask for feedback. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we have a mix, you know, there's property managers with hundreds of properties and then there's ones that just have one or two. And a lot of oftentimes people who own their own, so they'll use it for their guests. And then they also stay in that property themselves and they'll even use it for themselves. Mm. And, and given that, you know, it might be for a second home or just for one, um, someone with one property that might only be available uh, summertime. 
So there's no contract. Can you just pick up and use Notable whenever you want? Yeah, so in our dashboard, and I didn't show this part because um, we're, we're reworking it right now with the partner. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want, and we haven't released that publicly, so I didn't show it yet. Um, there's the ability to not only like set delivery fees, but you can turn on and off specific properties or all of your properties. So if, for example, I don't know, you know, you just don't want to offer Noshable because you were using your own staff um, to do all the deliveries and you might use different people and one person always did this home and they're out sick. But like mm. you can turn that off until, you know, indefinitely until they're better or there's a renovation or there's issues with the fridge. And you're like, I don't even know if the fridge is working. I don't want to get hundreds of dollars of groceries these guests paid for put there. You have the ability to enable and disable properties whenever you'd like. Um, mm. So theoretically, if you just didn't want to use Noshable for a little bit, um, you could turn off all of your properties indefinitely and then turn them back on uh, when you deem appropriate. Mm. And, and one more thing about the geography of America. Okay, so I can understand, you know, in a city environment, yes, easy to get deliveries and pick up groceries, et cetera, et cetera. How do you find uh, the delivery aspect or the fulfillment aspect in the countryside or in the mountains? Is that like, forget it, it's too hard or you've managed? Yeah, so I think, well, you almost just answered your own question in the sense that if you said, forget it, it's too hard, then that's the experience the guest is going to go through, Right. Um, and so that's really the definition of hospitality is, is making their, their trip as easy as possible. Um, mm. So yes, it, I, it is harder than being in the city, I would say. Um, and generally the delivery fees will be a little bit more expensive, but since they're already very affordable, guests are more than willing to pay that. So mountain towns, for example, ski towns, I'm a big skier myself. Mm -hmm. um, they oftentimes, the grocery stores can sometimes be 30, 20 to 40 minutes outside of like yeah. the town you're actually staying in to ski if you're actually staying like in, the, in this main town. Um, and that, that ends up being an hour and a half trip, sometimes just worth of driving alone, not to mention shopping in a store that you're not familiar with, um, which according to NASDAQ, the average time shopping in a grocery store that you are familiar with still takes 41 minutes. So you can call that at maybe roughly an hour. That's almost three hours of your vacation mm. that you're spent doing that. So we found that that actually is one of like the biggest value adds, believe it or not, even if it charges a little bit more because of the time spent, um, it's it's saving you three hours of, of your trip just driving after potentially traveling long hours to get there. So um, yeah. I do the application there. Well, I agree. It's a little bit longer process for the person doing the delivery. Um, it it's even adds more value because that's yeah. better than, than the guest. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, lucky America, that's all I can say. Uh, is there anything that we have not touched on? about Noshable that we should know about? Um, I'm not, I don't think so. I think we've, this is pretty in depth. I think you asked good questions. Um, yeah, overall, I, I think hit a lot of the nails on the head. Uh, I'm trying to think, but I feel like we, it, it's pretty simple concept. Ultimately, it's just something that hasn't been done at, at a national level yeah. uh, yet. So I think, yeah, it's, I, I think that's a it. great yeah. convenience though. Absolute great convenience. And okay. maybe we'll just do a, another recap when you hit Europe. So we can have another little refresh and get all Europe on board as well. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Would love to do that. So then it right. gives me an excuse to come visit. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay. Well, if anyone has any questions for Connor, pop them into the comments below. I will put the link in the uh, description below. Connor, it's been a pleasure learning about Noshable. Thank you very much. Likewise, thanks for having me on. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to catch up on ones you've missed, just head to thetechexplainedseries.com. Or if you're short for time, you can head to thetechminis.com where you'll find extra short interviews. See you next time.